Next up, we've got Kate Matsudaira from uh, SEO Moz, where she's the VP of Engineering. And uh, she's going to talk about being awesome. Uh, advice to be uh, awesome at engineering, operations, and life. Uh, go ahead, uh, Kate. Well, hi, everybody. First, um, I'm really excited to be here today. And um, like Mike earlier, this is my first online conference, so hopefully it'll go well. Um, in the interest of brevity, there's a lot of material to cover, so I'm just going to kind of get started. So as most of you know, in operations and engineering types of jobs, we're constantly having to learn because to really be an amazing technologist, you have to keep improving your technical skills. There's always new things going on, new developments, things like that, and, and to be great, you have to stay on top of that. But interestingly enough, while we are very good about staying on top of our technical skills, most of us tend to not spend a lot of time focusing or improving our personal skills or our soft skills. And some of us need this the most. <laughs> and so today, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking to you about some of the things that um, will really take you to the next level in terms of being a great um, you know, operations person or engineer in your role. And most of this stuff comes from my experience. Um, so I started my career as a developer, and I've kind of worked my way into management, and I've kind of seen both sides. So I'm a, and I've certainly had a lot of growing to do myself. So hopefully um, some of this will be you know, new ideas or maybe reminders for some of you. But either way, it should help you be the best that you can be, um, regardless of what your role is. So one of the most important parts of your job right, is, is managing your own career. Um, for many people, they think that just showing up at work and doing a good job will be enough. Um, they assume that management will notice how hard they're working and all the effort they're putting in, the attention to detail, and that they'll be recognized for that. Like, and I used to think this myself, but the thing is that your um, working hard is not necessarily enough. There's a lot more um, to managing your job that you have to do. And part of the problem is that not all managers are actually good managers. And if, even if you do have a good manager, chances are they're really busy, and they only kind of see snapshots of your performance. So this means that it's really your job. But that's kind of OK, because you're the person who cares the most about your career. And so you, know, you have to take it in your own hands, grab the bull by the horns, horn, so to speak, and um, really show what you're doing and how you're contributing. So it really comes down to two things in managing your career. The first one is getting noticed. So making sure that your manager and your teammates or your manager's manager, that basically the people that you're working with actually know what you're doing and, and, and what your contributions are. The second part of that is making sure that the work that you're doing actually aligns with what your team and your company's priorities are. Um, very many people get distracted by you know, things that are shiny or interesting, but that's not always the right thing. And so being able to you know, take those yourself and figure that out is key. So let me tell you how to, you know, to do that. So you've got to communicate your status. Um, there's lots of ways to provide status. With a lot of agile teams, they have scrum or stand up, and people are communicating a lot more about what they're accomplishing. But not everyone's bosses come to stand up, and it's possible that you do a lot of other stuff that isn't in uh, you know, stand up or scrum. So for most people who are overachievers, um, they're doing a lot, and things like code reviews, interviews, um, maybe documentation, maybe you're automating things, maybe you're contributing to open source or you know, speaking at events. These are all really important things, but a lot of the time people won't realize that you're doing it if you don't let them know. So um, one of the easiest ways to do this that I recommend to people is just to send a weekly status mail. And it's also sometimes good for yourself just to write it. Um, and so this is an example. So it's really simple. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes, but something that says, you know, here's at the top like a summary of what you're doing. Like your, what is the high level thing that you got done that week? Um, the second part is go into some details. I try to highlight stuff that isn't necessarily obvious. So things like code reviews or meetings that you were in or things that are cross group that may not be part of like the core project that you're working on. Also, anytime you put in extra effort, maybe you worked extra hours on an operational issue, or maybe you had to work extra over the weekend to get something done, managers won't necessarily be aware of that if you don't tell them. Um, and so making sure that you let them know. Um, and then finally, 
putting in priorities for the, the following week. And this helps you kind of make sure that like what you're planning to do is actually what they want, your boss wants you to do. And so thinking that through. Um, so kind of tied in with this is make sure that you're telling them what they don't know. Um, and making sure that what you're doing is the right thing. Um, so things like code reviews, I, you know, I kind of mentioned these different things. Um, so finally, sorry, slides out of order. So how do you know that what you're doing is the right thing? Um, this is always, I think, a challenge. Uh, for example, recently there was an employee on my team that really wanted to work on these improved admin tools, and they spent all this extra time um, doing it. But the problem was that we already had admin tools that worked, and while theirs were certainly better, they had spent all this extra time doing something that actually didn't bring a lot of business value. This is called being like the CEO of your job, and so making sure that you're asking right questions so you understand what really matters. And so if this employee, for example, had asked any of the following questions to their manager, they could have made sure that what they're doing or how they're spending their extra time is actually what really matters. And so, you know, to prevent this sort of situation in yourself, if you want to do extra or you want to do more, make sure you're soliciting feedback ahead of time so that you can be sure that what you're working on is actually going to be really valued. The second part is to solicit regular feedback. So besides working on the right set of projects, making sure you understand what a good project is for your company. This means that there's a few things you need to consider, right? So the first thing is that you have to be ready to take feedback. So a lot of the time people want feedback and they really do value it and they want to make sure that what they're doing is great, but they aren't necessarily ready to take it. The thing about feedback is that giving feedback is actually really hard. You never know how someone's going to react, and as a manager, I can tell you that um, it's always hard because you're worried you're going to hurt someone's feelings or they're going to argue with you. And so the first step to like really getting value and understanding that what you're doing is right is to make sure that you're willing to take feedback. So you have to be gracious. Um, you have to, if someone gives you their opinion, to actually listen to them. Um, if you have trouble listening, take notes. And if you don't agree, you've got to resist the urge to refute it. You just have to listen and take it in. You have to remember that everyone's point of view is valid. Um, it's a point of view, right? The same situation can be looked at by a lot of different people, a lot of different directions. And so by being able to look at that and kind of see that and see it from their point of view, you'll help understand what is important to them and make sure that you're doing the right things. The other key part about feedback is you've got to ask on a regular basis. So for example, if someone comes into my office and just says, hey, can I have some feedback? Or it's sometimes hard for me to come up with it on, a fly, on the fly. But if someone asks me every week in their meeting or regularly in my meetings with them, um, I'll tend to be more aware of smaller points and smaller things and make note of them so that the next time they ask me, I'll be able to give them useful feedback. Um, the other key part about getting good feedback is you have to ask good questions. So you can't simply ask. Do you have feedback for me? Um, some people might still give you really useful feedback, but you're going to get a much better answer if you ask things like, what could have gone better in this project? Or how could I have made this email easier to understand? Or even, how could I make this diagram more clear? These sort of things are going to get you really valuable knowledge than just asking for very general stuff. All right, so now we've been able to manage our manager, and we're managing up. John, I think you should mute your line. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Um, so the next step is it's really about being a great teammate. Um, so we all work with a lot of smart people, and it's really easy to get caught up in our work. Um, as problems are there to be solved, right? And so it's easy to just focus on those. But the thing is that the people you're working with and those relationships are going to be probably the most important part of your job, like five, ten years down the road. At least that's definitely been the case for me. And so you've got to be a great teammate. So what is a great teammate? And so think in your head, um, who is, you know, your favorite coworker? Who's the person that you've really loved working with? What, what is it about them that you liked? What are, like, the traits? Um, so you kind of have this in, in your head. For most people, this tends to be things like they're really happy, positive people. Um, they see the best in people and situations, and they pull their own weight, like they're hard workers, and they know, and they're willing to help if it's needed. So typically, um, 
you know, I'm a really critical and cynical person by nature, but I think that, you know, kind of thinking about this in a different way, I realized that I was not this person. Um, I was a person that when you talk to, I could point out all the things that was wrong with your idea. I was really good at being an editor and really critical. But this meant that people didn't really like bringing their ideas to me um, because I would tell them all the things that were wrong. And so you've got to bring solutions, uh, to not just problems. So if people come to you with an idea or something, don't just shoot it down. Even if you know that it's not perfect or you have a better suggestion, think about it as a collaborative opportunity to work together to come up with the best solution. Um, and this includes things like organizational problems and process um, or management even. Don't just come with, oh, I think this is wrong and you need to fix it. No, that's not helpful or useful. You know, come up with a solution because people like working with those sort of people a lot better. Uh, finally, um, never take credit. This is actually, uh, there's a saying, never take credit, always take blame. And it was something that uh, I was taught really early when I first became a manager. But I think it really applies to anyone on a team. Um, many of us, and I'm guilty of this too, we want to be liked, we want to be admired, and we want to feel valued. Um, but for many of us, um, where recognition is, or, and this sort of praise is motivating, um, it can sometimes mean that you're not necessarily giving credit words to your peers or the people around you. So when you accomplish something or you do something, typically more people contribute it. Be the person that always says we instead of I. Um, be the person that always you know, highlights the other people who contributed or helped or did things. Because those are the type of people people want to work with. Um, but like I said, never take credit, but uh, never, or always take blame. Make sure that if something does get screwed up, you take responsibility for the things that go wrong. So even if it is mostly someone else's fault, standing up and owning your part prevents others from feeling slighted. And it also sets an example to those around you about taking responsibility and ownership for what you're doing. So, Another key part of this that you kind of heard me mention is you've got to have a good attitude. And I think this is one that a lot of technical people, uh, a lot of us in these roles, tend to have issues with, right? We, it's very easy to be negative or fussy when the pager goes off in the middle of the night. Um, and I know for I for sometimes have a hard time dealing with stress, right? When things are going wrong, that's like, but that's the most critical time when you need to have a good attitude and you need to be that person. Um, that's there for people because that's the type of people that people want on their teams, people want to work with. It's going to get you more jobs in the future. Um, a great technique for this, I actually learned this from a pickup artist. It's called reframing the situation. Uh, this is a technique where you look at the situation and you, it's really easy to dwell on something when something bad happens. Uh, so like the site goes down, it's really easy to focus on that and be like, this is the end of the world, I'm so upset. But the thing is that in the long scheme of things, it's actually not a big deal. I mean, think back like two years ago. How many operational issues do you actually remember? Like for me, it's actually kind of hard. I can remember stuff the last six months, but beyond that, it's kind of you forget all the little things. Um, and so being able to look at situations like this and actually realize that they're minor and see them as an opportunity for growth, an opportunity to be better, is going to make you a better person. Um, and it's going to make you easier to work with, and it's going to make these situations not seem like such a big deal, allowing you to hopefully have a much better attitude. Um, but just remember that on a team, that you are awesome, and that being, um, working with other people and feeling that about yourself is a great way to get you there. So, and I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast, everyone, like I said, I've got a lot of material. So, <laughs> the next step is uh, to be a great communicator. Um, so when it comes to being a great teammate or even doing well at managing up, uh, a cornerstone to all of this is being able to communicate. And typically when people talk about communication, they often talk about just pushing out information or imparting ideas. But to me, it's not just about, um, you know, sharing ideas. It's really about also being a good listener. So, um, so for example, sorry, I didn't see the gain on the right slide. Here we go. Um, so for listening, uh, how do you feel if people didn't listen when you spoke, right? You'd feel hurt, you'd feel upset, you'd feel maybe disrespected. Um, so not listening can really hurt your relationships with your teammates and your coworkers. And it can also create a situation where people don't want to share ideas with you. Um, and there, but 
listening isn't just about um, you know, hearing someone else. There's a, a difference between listening and active listening. And so um, for active listening, it's not just about hearing what's being said, but it's also being open to the speaker's point of view. And so there's two parts to the statement. One is paying attention and synthesizing the information, and the other is actually being receptive to new viewpoints. Um, a great way to help with this is when you hear something or someone talking to you is to actually, well, the slides are like going really out of order. Um, bear with me while I get on the right slide. Um, okay. Uh, so the, the key part about this is that uh, there's some good questions that you can ask that help people uh, really make sure that you've heard what they're saying. So for example, um, uh, being able to summarize what they've said and making sure that you really understand their point of view. The second uh, part of this is really being open. So this means that when you listen, that you're not just hearing what they're saying, but they're, you're also being receptive, so that you're not assuming what they're going to say is one way or the other. Sometimes this is really difficult for engineers or operation people or just generally smart people because they think five steps ahead of everyone else. So they can interrupt or assume what someone else is going to say or maybe even critique what it is before it's out of their mouth. Um, so here's kind of my do's and don'ts of active listening. Um, so I'll just have to push all these slides to you guys. I'm sorry. I, since I moved, skipped around, the slides are now. Okay, here we go. So the first one is don't interrupt. So this can be hard, but when you already know the answer to something or have a thought about the solution, um, allowing people to say their thoughts shows respect and consideration. Um, the second thing is don't assume. So a lot of the time, like I said, if you're thinking five steps ahead, you feel like you know what they're going to say, but that prevents them from voicing their ideas. Um, problem solving and brainstorming and planning are all things that are better done collaboratively, so you need to let people actually speak. The second part, or the final part is um, allow people, or there's more parts actually, allow pe ask clarifying questions. So a lot of people refer to this as a Socratic method, but it's really trying to understand the why behind what someone else is su suggesting. So even if like their how it may not make sense, getting to the underlying motivation of their suggestion is key and will help you um, make sure that they're actually able to share their thoughts. Um, the next, uh, finally, you know, acknowledge their viewpoint. So this is kind of in synthesizing the information and summarizing it, but make sure that even if you don't agree with it or it's not necessarily the popular view, that you acknowledge it because they wouldn't say it if it, didn't actually, if it wasn't important to them or they didn't actually feel it. So saying things like, that's a good thing to consider or thanks for bringing that up, we should take a note of it, um, is really all that you need to do but makes people feel heard and understood. Um, the second thing is wait for a response. So a lot of the time people will ask a question and especially if a person is the type of person that really needs to formulate their thoughts in their head before speaking, and they won't necessarily wait uh, for a response. This, and I'm definitely guilty of this because I'm the person that talks without a big filter between my mind and my mouth, and so things just kind of come out, and this means that you know, I'm always talking, everything's a rough draft, but then I work with people that when they speak, they've really thought about everything thoroughly before they speak, and so it's really important to know that about your coworkers and to be able to let them and so when you ask a question, actually waiting um, and letting the silence sit there, which can be very hard, um, for their answer. Finally, or on the do's and don'ts part, make sure you're paying attention to body language. So not all communication is said out loud. Um, and that means that taking a few moments to actually look at how the person is reacting to you can help you craft your message and make sure that you're asking good questions or that um, you're taking the right tone. So if they are agreeing with you, you know, being more dynamic and positive, whereas if they seem like they're very guarded or unhappy, you know, maybe asking more questions or asking them, you know, why and, and getting to the bottom of it and, and really understanding. So let's say you've got listening mastered and you're really good at that. Uh, that's kind of the first step, but the next step is really about communication. I think this is, you know, what a lot of engineers and people typically tend to have issues with. 
Um, and there's really two parts to this. There's both verbal and, and written. And I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time on, on email in a minute. But let's talk about the things that are common between both of them. So the first one is know your audience. Um, as with any sort of communication, really understanding who you're talking to and more importantly, what they care about is the key to an effective message. And this is really important for people in operations roles. When you send out an email to your whole team or your whole company or the VP, really thinking about what they want to know is important. Because I think for us technologists, you know, we love details. And so sometimes you'll see these big emails with all this stuff, but maybe your VP doesn't really want to know that. They just want to know the customer impact. And so thinking about who you're sending the email to or who you're talking to and crafting your message accordingly will make sure that it's much more likely to get across. And finally, um, on the details thing, sorry, I went back to this old slide again. I keep hitting, uh, is that less is more. So um, with any email, we're bombarded with information all the time. And so a lot of internal details and stuff may not be as important. And so focus on trying to distill your message down to the smallest amount of text possible so that if someone reads it, they can get what really needs to be, you know, uh, understood that it comes across. And so spending time to cool down your message is a really key way to make sure that it actually gets read. Um, another key important part about communication is that you've got to keep everyone on the same page. So where, where less was more with like text, um, more is better when it comes to communication and frequency. Um, one of the first things I learned uh, when I was an engineer and I was working on a 24 by 7 team uh, was how to do this well. Because when I was fix working on an issue, um, there was this operational issue. I got paged and I started looking at it right away and I was, I was looking at it. And an hour had gone by and I still didn't quite have to figure it out, but I thought I did. But I was worried that if I sent email like ahead of time saying any, that I didn't know, that I would um, be in trouble. And so then what happens is the VP sends an email to my whole team saying, hey, the, you know, I noticed this wasn't working as expected. Is anyone looking into it? And, and of course I was. Um, but so the, the big lesson here was that you don't want to wait um, to communicate. People assume the worst without information. And so even if you're looking into it, just sending a simple email that is like, I'm looking into this, I'm the person on point, um, reassures everyone and lets someone know that you're handling it. Uh, do not wait until you fixed it to send out the email. Um, just send it out right away. Even if you fix it five minutes later and you send two emails, it's much better uh, to make sure everyone knows and, and eliminate that uncertainty. Um, another key part about communication is to use multiple mediums. Um, so people absorb information in different ways. Um, for example, I know that I'm a visual learner and I have a really hard time digesting verbal information. So this is part of the reason I take copious notes. Um, but if you understand your audience, then you can craft your communication style to them. And so if you really want to get a message across, you can tell someone verbally, but then follow up an email. And by using different mediums, you can really be sure that what you're trying to say is actually you know, received by the audience. Um, finally, uh, let's talk a little bit about email. So we talked a little bit about multiple mediums and, and verbal. Um, but with written communication, uh, being able to write good emails is, is key, and especially in an ops or operations role where typically you're dealing with a lot of problems that come up or things like that. Um, so oh, I keep messing up my slides. Um, one quick sec. So I'm going to go through this real fast. Um, so the first part with email is make use of the subject. Um, so make sure that you actually put useful information in the subject. So these are real uh, subject lines that I had. and. Uh, better subject lines for the same topic. Um, and so by doing this, it allows people to skim and kind of get to what's important. The next key part of emails is unlike an essay, you want to put the important points at the top. So don't wait for the end till your conclusion. This allows people who maybe receive hundreds or more emails every day to see what's important and distill it down. So the one sentence at the very top should always be what you're actually trying to say. Um, the next thing is craft emails so that they can be skimmed. So this means um, probably the biggest thing that I think engineers have trouble with it, it, around communication is these emails that look something like this. They're these long verbal paragraphs that really explain everything. But um, 
that isn't necessarily the best way to information. So for me, this is how I think. Like this is actually an example of an email that I would have sent. But here's an example of the same email that I rewrote. And what you can see is I use things like headings and bullet points and bold and, and colors to really get what I was trying to get across. And that's kind of the key thing is you want to make it so that your email can be skimmed and read easily. The other key part of that is make actions clear. So make it really clear like what the next steps are and who the owners are. If you send an email to a mailing list, make it clear who you actually respond. Don't just write thoughts, question mark, because that's not terribly useful for people. Tell, tell the people whose thoughts you actually want, and that will make it much more likely you're going to get a response. So finally, um, this is kind of the last part about this, and I'm, I know I'm low on time, so I'm going to talk even faster, uh, is uh, make sure that you're continually improving. So regardless of what you're doing, just like technology um, and that part of your skill set, continue to become better at improving um, the what you're doing and mastering your soft skills. So for example, um, make sure that you really know your talents. So a key part of this is knowing what you're good at. What are the parts of the job that you love to do? Um, chances are that these are probably also the things that emphasize your strengths. Understanding this about yourself can help you articulate the type of tasks and projects you want to work on to your manager, um, hopefully making you happy and more successful. The next part kind of to this is know your weaknesses. So sometimes there are certain ways of thinking or types of projects or things that you're just not going to be good at. So learning that about yourself and being able to um, you know, change your job or hire people or work with people that are good at that will help you um, and make you more successful. Uh, finally, uh, learn to talk about it. Being able to articulate what your strengths and weaknesses are to your manager, to your teammates will be helpful and will help you understand, you know, the context of your role and how that fits with your current company and job description. Uh, to do this well, ask lots of questions and make sure you're listening to the results. Talk to people in senior versions of your role, um, maybe positions that you think you might want. Uh, learn what they took to get there and what makes them good at their job, and that will help you uh, kind of move in that direction. Um, two more, and, uh, or three more, I guess. Uh, surround yourself with people smarter than you. Um, this is, I think, a really important one, because if you strive to be the little fish in the big pond, you will grow and learn from everyone, and you will become more successful through working with those people. Uh, you have to care and be passionate. Regardless of what you do, care about how you do it. No job is worth doing if you're not going to do it well, so put in the assignments and give a damn about the results. Um, and finally, make sure that you have a plan. Uh, so things that you, little things in life, uh, you know, knowing where you're headed and being able to identify those steps will, much, will increase the probability that you will actually achieve it. Um, so, it, to conclude this, uh, go and be awesome and do great in your job because I'm sure that you will. Um, life and work are an ongoing journey and if you continue to improve, you're going to be even better. And if you want more of this information, there's a link on my personal blog that kind of has a whole series of articles that does a much better job explaining this in writing for those who don't learn verbally. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. I think that's awesome. Um, and uh, and there's there's a lot of conversation uh, back and forth in the group chat about um, about a lot of the things that you're talking about and um, people sort of swapping um, tips and tricks for this. One of the things that that came out um, that during this was a lot of people were saying. Um, Wow, I need my manager to see this deck. But if I send it to him, uh, that might be awkward and weird. So I'm gonna. Um, uh, I, I certainly will come in. I think it would be good for all the other, uh, at least on the other speakers on the uh, on the OLC, even the attendees, um, to to later when the when the um, on the Velocity Comp site links to this presentation and the recordings, um, and that way it won't be a uh, you know, uh, passive aggressive. You, we really ought to look at this uh, sort of thing. Um, I think that this presentation is excellent, and quite frankly, and it, 
Sorry none I had a problem the, with the slide, but no. And 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 one of the things that I thought was was excellent was that um, that. Uh, how, what you view as a problem of the slides, uh, to me, I thought m may have been a, a, a online conference Freudian slip. But coming back to the listening slide, um, I'd say is, uh, is 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 welcome emphasis. And uh, and um, yeah, and 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 I and I will say that uh, I I I think that that none of the other topics. Performance operations and and handling outages and 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 and, um, and tuning things and and all of these things that we talk about at both on the online conference and and at the in-person velocity conference, none of that matters unless these sorts of foundations um, uh, in, in 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 personalities and be and people being able to um, uh, talk skillfully and listen skillfully. Um, uh, isn't in place. These are these are uh, absolutely foundational slides. So so thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah, and I always tell people if they think they have bad managers, like manage their managers. Like if you don't, like push yeah. the information to them, right, and ask them good questions. They, it will force them to manage you. Like if yeah. you ask your manager, like tell me how, like give me three things I could have done better, and you, like sit there and actually wait and for them to answer. Like that's the other Indeed. part about the listening. And then be open to it. And if you do it regularly enough, like you will get value out of it. But you have to be proactive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, and and it's uh, it's uh, um, somebody just mentioned that it is amazing how many people think that this info is common sense, um, but often don't do it in practice in the group chat. Now I don't know if you have uh, some some time to hang out in in, in the group chat. Um, if if folks want to um, uh, ask for any more tips and tricks um, in the meantime, but uh, so um, but I'd like to uh, keep keep moving forward. Thanks a lot, Kate.